KLZR Melbourne. A Cumulus Station. Sports Radio 1560 The Fan. It's time to talk sports. Now for the fan studios in Melbourne. It's the Mark Moses Show on Sports Radio 1560 The Fan. You can be a part of the conversation at 321-984-1234. Now, here's your host, Mark Moses. Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome indeed to a Monday edition of the Mark Moses Show, only right here on Sports Radio 1560. The fan. And you know what? We did this last week. I'm going to do it again today. This is how we're going to start. Because I'm calling my shot here on Monday, January 25th. Here is, here is the last couple of games. You ready for this? We're going to start with this. We got much to discuss today. Here is two weeks ago. This is my stone cold lock. My pick of the week. And I usually do picks on Friday. I'm doing it right now. Monday, January 11th, 2021, it's 3.02 Eastern Time Zone. The Buccaneers are going to go to the Dome there in New Orleans, and they're going to win. I picked it correct. The Bucs won. Here's last Tuesday. I'm going to double down like we're playing poker here on the air. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to go to Green Bay, and they're going to win this football game. They're going to get it done because Tom Brady's on a mission. Bang! Bang! I'm going to do it again. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? The game's in two weeks. I'm starting the show with this. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to go to Tampa, (laughs) their home stadium. Still crazy to say out loud. They're going to be the home team, and they're going to beat Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Book it. It's my Stone Cold Lock. They're going to win by seven points, and they're going to win Super Bowl 55. I've gotten it right, the whole playoffs. I'm going to continue the hot streak if you're a Buccaneers fan. Cue Anthony's music. Let's go Tampa Bay. Let's go Tampa Bay. By the way, the rum's good. Yeah, that's right. Touchdown Tampa Bay. Fire the cannons. Bucks lead. I... I'm not even a Buccaneers fan. I just want to bring that up on the air. I'm not. But I've been talking about this incarnation of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers since last spring. Since the day Tommy Brady signed with the Buccaneers. Every single day. Especially during this pandemic. Every single day. And Mondays we recap the Buccaneers and... I get friends and and insiders all week long. We've been talking Buccaneers with this team since last spring. And it's incredible. It's a great story. And I tell you that all the time. I'm not rooting for the player or the team. I'm rooting for the best story. Well, locally, in our backyard, there's a team going to the Super Bowl. And if you think about the last like five months for the Tampa area, where you had... Uh, the Rays win the pennant. I know they lost to the Dodgers. Then a couple weeks later, what'd you have? The Stanley Cup, where the Lightning beat the Dallas Stars and win their second cup ever. And now you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going to the Super Bowl. Let's go, Tampa Bay. Let's go, Tampa Bay. By the way, the rum's good. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Fire the cannon. No, I, you know what? Before I get into my analysis... I think we should start with this. I think I should just play a bunch of audio from yesterday with the great Gene Decker off. We usually do this segment on Wednesdays, but I'm going to make an exception today here on a Victory Monday if you're a Buccaneers fan. So let's cue the music, then we'll get to some of these amazing calls. Taken by Neil. He gives it to Wycheck. Wycheck. That looked like a forward pass. Jordan. Michael Jordan. 14 seconds. Believe in miracles. Yes. Fourth and five. The national championship on the line right here. That ball hit hard. Stretch. Austin Jackson back looks up. You can't. Put it on the board. Yes. Final seconds. What a finish. It's back-to-back titles for 
the heat. I mean, you can take a knee and try a 56-yard field goal. This is not Detroit, man. This is the Super Bowl. Sets up. Fires. Caught. Oh! Look at that all in the block and you're going to score. Florida takes its place in history. Okay. This is the Buccaneers Radio Network. This is a friend of the show. He's the voice of the Florida State Seminoles. And if you're watching on video, here is the autographed football he gave me a couple years ago. And I leave this right here in the studio. Um, here is Gene Deckeroff. And, uh, yeah, this play was big yesterday. Fournette, the running back. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Brady to throw. Throws a deep pass downfield. Got Scotty Miller in the open. Makes the catch. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Scotty Scooter Miller. And Brady puts it right on the spot. Bucks score with no time left or very little in the first half. Yeah, that was the touchdown right before halftime. A shocking play where the Buccaneers had it fourth and three at midfield. They're going to punt. They call timeout. They come back on the field. Brady throws an exceptional pass in the flat to Fournette, double teamed. First down, then he goes to Scotty Miller. I actually like Joe Buck's call on this play as well. Brady goes for the deep shot. He's got a touchdown! Scotty Miller! Oh my gosh! Oh, I know. Incredible. Troy Aikman and Joe Buck. Here's more of Gene Deckeroff. Here's the snap at an end around to Godwin. Godwin running to the three. He's got the first down across the party. Bucks are going to win this football game. Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a reverse play. Who would have guessed? Byron Leftwich and Bruce Arians dial up the right play. Godwin, our leading receiver, he romps for the first down. And the Buccaneers have a fresh set with 27 seconds left. Uh, here, I got three more with Gene, uh, just to soak it in here on a Monday. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be the first team ever to host a Super Bowl. The Bucs have punched their ticket to Super Bowl 55. Oh, man. And I think we might have to add this to the board right here. Here, Gene Deckeroff. Tom Brady, you're the real deal. <laughs> That's so great. One more from Gene here. The Bucs win! Bucs win! Tampa Bay is heading to the Super Bowl. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's for real, baby. Let's go, Tampa Bay. Let's go, Tampa Bay. By the way, the rum's good. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, I, I can't. I, it's like if you would have told me a year ago, a year ago, Oh, by the way, uh, the, the Buccaneers were getting Tom Brady and Gronk and Leonard Fournette and Rob Gronkowski and and uh, and uh, oh yeah, Rob Gronkowski. And he had a big play yesterday as well. And then uh, uh, yeah, Tom Brady were coming to the team. Oh, and then um, yeah, they'd go to New Orleans and Green Bay and win. Unbelievable. Brady is on a mission. I, and you know what's funny about yesterday? If we really start breaking down the X's and O's of this game, it really was where Tampa Bay made plays when they had to. They had mistakes in this game. They did. But they made the plays when they had to, especially in the first half. And then Green Bay was screwing up. Green Bay! I, they had chance... You're 13 and 3. You're the number one seed. You got the MVP as your quarterback, and you blew it. It's not the referees. It's not the play calling. You blew it. You blew it. You had four quarters to get it done. Man, oh man. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'm going to say it again. They are going to the Super Bowl, and they're going to take on the defending Super Bowl champion. Kansas City Chiefs. I said this all last week. We had a final four where any of the matchups for the Super Bowl would have been great. This might be the best one because I know you're going to hear a lot of this where it's kind of like a changing of the guard where you got the GOAT and then you got another quarterback where he potentially could become the new GOAT. Changing of the guard. And remember, they met two years ago in the playoffs. In the AFC Championship game there at Arrowhead in Kansas City, and Tom Brady was one play better, beating him in overtime. This is going to be a great game. It really is. I cannot wait. I know you're going to have, what, 22,000 people at the game. It's going to be, you know, we're still in a pandemic. Won't be a full house. We won't have parties. But, but 
We're going to have ourselves a ball game in two weeks. It's going to be so much fun. And, and I said this last night on, on TV, on News 13. I'm going to say it again right now. I, this goes out to all those Buccaneer fans out there listening where, and you've heard them on my show, a lot of these guys, they've been kicked down, made fun of, They've been a disappointment. They've been awful. They've had crab legs as a quarterback. Like, all these things. You're going to the Super Bowl, buddy, and it must be great. And I've experienced this as an NFL fan where your team's going to the Super Bowl. It's the greatest feeling in the world. It really, that, the Monday after championship Sunday, your team wins and you're going on to the Super Bowl, it's the best, the best. In my mind, it's better than going to the World Series, the Stanley Cup Final, Final Four. No, it's the best. It's the number one sport, and we're going to have a great game in two weeks. I can't wait. Sign me up. Oh, that Tom Brady guy. Here, Here's what I want to bring up. And we hammered a lot of this last week. But this just grows with the legacy. Is You think about this. This guy's been in the NFL for 20 years. Like, he is a machine. The guy got drafted in 2000. 2000! It's 2021. The guy keeps winning football games. I'm seeing these memes. I know, like, Robin Rockledge hit me up, and I had some other people as well. Like, oh, it's kind of like the WrestleMania where Hulk Hogan took on The Rock. Right, And it's two icons going against each other, where it's the ultimate icon versus the new icon. Isn't this amazing? I was like, no, no. Brady's not Hulk Hogan. He's Goldberg. He won't go away. You, you think he's going to go away, and you're like, hey, he's one of the greats of all time. No, he keeps showing up. He won't go away. And, and I put this on Twitter, and you can follow me at Mark Moses' show. It, I really did this. I was like, all right, here's your hopes and dreams. Right, They're over here on the left. And then on the right comes Tom Brady to your town where, hey, we're going to do this. Isn't it great? No, you're not. No, I'm shutting that down. I'm Tom Brady. I'm here to eat your soul. That's what I'm here to do. Man, that guy, he just, he knows how to win. And it, and this is very true. And if you're a Patriots fan, you might disagree with me. But after 20 years, New England said, yeah, we'll let him walk. How did you let him leave? How? Why? Why would you let this happen? Why didn't you pay him? He still could play at a high level. Why? I'm yelling into the microphone because I'm trying to just channel every Patriots fan out there. How do you let this guy walk? I don't want to hear, oh, well, Belichick. And, uh, no, no. Uh, it makes no sense. You guys blew it. You had Jimmy G. You should have let him be in the waiting. After Brady said, I'm going to retire, I'm going to leave, and you should have had Jimmy G this year. And you screwed that up as well. Hey, you won six titles and nine trips with that Belichick Brady. But he's taking the Tampa Buccaneers to the Super Bowl, and your asses are at home, and you didn't even make the playoffs. You let him walk. What are you doing? It's shocking. I just, I can't believe it. That's why I'm just shaking my head today. You let Tom Brady leave. And he went to Tampa Bay and played at high level and beat everyone in the NFC. It's amazing. It's just, and and you know what that means? After 20 years, he's still an underdog. Because the Patriots are like, all right, whatever. We'll move on. We're going to move on from Tom Brady. Even though he made our franchise, you know, one of the great elite programs, franchises in professional sports. And, You know, probably the franchise went up 10 times and we got a new stadium and everyone fears and respects the Patriots, but that, whatever. They didn't believe in him, so he proved them wrong. He was an underdog at New Orleans, at Green Bay, and guess what? I saw the line this morning. He's a three-point dog to Patrick Mahomes in his own stadium in the Super Bowl. He's an underdog again. (sighs) Ah. And you know what's the ultimate slap in the face? Green Bay Packers, they didn't believe Tom Brady would run out the clock. They're so stupid of a franchise, Green Bay. They thought, oh, this is like a regular season game when we're taking on Detroit or Minnesota or Chicago. 
oh, we're, we're taking on Kirk Cousins? Well, hey, we'll kick the field goal. We got our three timeouts, two-minute warning. We'll stop them. We'll get the ball back, and Aaron will go down the field and score a touchdown. You're not taking on those idiots. It's not Mitch Trubisky. It's not Matthew Stafford. It's not Kirk Cousins. It's not Jared Goff with his broken thumb. It's Tom Bleep and Brady. You poked the bear. You lost. You thought you can get the ball back. You also thought, oh, I'll kick the field goal. And yeah, I'll take the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands. That's another dumb move. And then this is complete loser talk as well. Is if you are complaining about the referees late in the game, you lost the game. I don't need to know the score. You lost the game. You're done. It's loser talk. And if you're a Packer fan, you got nine months to think about it now. You do. You had the number one seed, you had Aaron Rodgers, and you blew it. It wasn't the referees. You had 60 minutes. You couldn't get it done. You're done. You're like, well, the refs called this. I like what the refs did. I like they said, you know what? We're going to let them play football. We're going old school. Let's see what happens. But with the game on the line, it was third and four. Johnson's coming over the middle. And the problem is, if you kind of grab and let go, I think they let it stand. The problem is you're holding on to the jersey, and it's pulling away. It's a defensive holding, five-yard penalty. It's first down. Buccaneers are going to the Super Bowl. Man, oh, man. And I'm watching that second half. When they get up 28-10, to 10, then it's 28-17. Then what is it, like 28 what, 23? It's something like that. And I'm like, I'm just like looking at the clock. I know a lot of Buccaneer fans just start doing the same. Like, come on. Hold on, baby. Kind of like the third period of the Miracle on Ice, USA versus, you know, the Soviets. In the last 10 minutes, I know the team's like, we're just looking at the clock. Just come on, baby. And the Buccaneers are just trying to hold on. Come on. And they did. And you know what's a crazy stat? The Buccaneers never trailed in this football game. They never did. They never trailed. Never. They always had the lead. And it was like weird mojo where they're up 28-17. You're like, oh, the Packers are going to win. I had buddies who love the Bucs are texting me, oh, we're going to lose this game. We're going to lose. We're not going to win. We're going to lose. I'm like, hold on. You got Tom Brady. So that's my keys to the game. If I'm going game ball... Even though he threw three interceptions, which were terrible, Brady was great at times, and that's what the Bucs needed. And and my favorite play with him was when they're up five late in the fourth, they're driving. There's a third down play. And I don't know if it was a missed assignment. A Packers defender had a free play, free rush at Brady. Brady, veteran. He's like, you know what? I'm not taking a sack. I'm not throwing an interception. I'm throwing it right in the dirt. Like he thought maybe it was like a false start or a dead play. Threw it right in the dirt. Set up fourth down. Kick the field goal. They go up eight. They never look back. That's why he's Tom Brady. That's a team-oriented decision. I don't need the stats. I'm going for the win, and I trust my kicker. That was great. That worked out. And second, why the Buccaneers won, the red zone defense was phenomenal in this game. They, They were not perfect, but... Here's what they did. 20 to 20, they were bending. They were not breaking. And when they got into the red zone, they really, there was only, I'd say, one play they screwed up where they gave up one red zone touchdown. It was a third down and goal. And for some reason, this was like start of the third quarter. For some reason, the Buccaneers, who were doing great, just playing in a base defense in the red zone, they blitz. Devontae Adams gets a one on one. Rodgers hits them. Touchdown, Packers. Besides that, nothing is open. And and this is really the key when they got to the red zone for their defense is the Packers were so scared, they didn't even try to attempt to run the football in the red zone. They didn't. They were too afraid of the front line. And five sacks yesterday. Uh, they were great. Sheck, Barrett, Jason, Pierre, Paul. Vita Vea played like about 35 snaps in this game. They were all great. And on the third down play, before they went for the field goal, Rodgers, you saw this on TV, if he just goes to the right, he's got wide open real estate to run for a touchdown. Wide open. But I think, and I know Rodgers said this after the game, I think he's thinking that Jason Pierre-Paul's right behind him, and if he tries to take off at 37 years old, he might get clipped and not score a touchdown. 
I w- when I saw that, I had like flashbacks of John Elway taking on the Packers, and he dove helicopter style for the first down. I, and he threw like he threw it across the field. It's ridiculous. The Packers are at home. They got Aaron Rodgers. The secondary for for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the two backups, and they still lost. Unbelievable. You know what? You know what? Let's go Tampa Bay. Let's go Tampa Bay. By the way, the rum's good. Touchdown Tampa Bay. Fire the cannons. Bucks lead. I want to give it up to my buddy Anthony Nachreiner, uh, Luke Easterling, the magic man Sammy, my buddy Jason Redman, my buddy Jerry Durney, and anyone else listening right now who's been a long-suffering Buccaneers fan Enjoy today. You deserve it. But um, starting tomorrow, it's time to get nervous. All right. They got two weeks to prepare. They do. Because uh, a juggernaut's coming to town. Yeah. I saw the stat this morning. Um, I believe Patrick Mahomes in his last 25 games. I, I believe. I could be wrong. I believe he's 24-1 and one as a starter. It's going to take a massive effort by everyone. They're going to have to play perfect to beat the Kansas City Chiefs and win their second Super Bowl. But guess what? Guess what? They got Tom Brady. I can't wait. We're going to preview it for the next two weeks. It's going to dominate this show as it should. Coming up next, Luke Easterling, the Bucks Wire. He covers the Bucks. He's joined us every Monday during the season. Victory Monday will break it down next. Jim Rome here with you.